So our first question, well, first I will introduce our panel. <laughs> so these are all current CHC students that are in the neurodiversity program. So up here to my right is M Dugan. M is a senior and a transfer student. So if any families or students have questions about transferring, M can definitely answer those questions. Next to M, we have Ryan O'Hara. Ryan is um, in our program as well as he's one of our federal work study students. He's also a student athlete. So if any family students have questions about athletics at CHC, Ryan is your guy. Ryan runs track and cross country. Then we have, next to Ryan, we have Breezy Howard. Breezy is also a freshman in the neurodiversity program. Breezy is also on our NeuroSpicy Network executive board. Um, so Breezy can answer lots of questions about what are, what is the NeuroSpicy Network? That's our um, school-wide club organization. So you can be a student in the neurodiversity program and you can be in the NeuroSpicy Network. You don't have to be in both. Um, to be in the network, you can just be a student at CHC, you can be a staff member, you can be faculty. Um, and then John, on the end, John is a freshman. John also is one of our federal work study students and he runs our social media page. So if anybody wants to follow us on Instagram, I'll mention that at the closing as well. But our Instagram handle is neurospicy underscore network. And John uh, runs that entirely himself. So he's our great social media guru and he takes a lot of pictures at our events. So that's our panel and we'll start answering some questions. So the first question I have for you guys is, I have absolutely no idea what I want to study in college. How did you pick your major? And what if I want to change my major after I start? Okay, so I'll answer this one. So how I picked my major, so I graduated high school in 2019, and then after that, I went to community college. I went to Montgomery County Community College, and then I transferred in 2022, the fall semester, to here. So my advice on um, how to pick your major is to go after what you're interested in, what your hobbies are. Um, what I always recommend is your freshman and sophomore year, you don't have to really know right away. When you get to your junior year, you should know because you're more taking classes towards your major. Um, but how I personally picked my major is I've always had a passion for wanting to work with others and I just love helping others and I wanna be a big advocate for those with disabilities, including myself and my peers. Um, I'm an elementary ed and special ed major, so the game plan is to be a special ed major. Uh, so I kind of always knew that. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher when I grew up. So, and if you want to change your major, as I told you before, junior year, you really got to know. So it's okay. Um, I don't really have experience changing my major, um, but you know, do what you really feel passionate about and you'll find something. And there's always something for everyone. There's a whole list of majors you can choose from and you know, you can try it out. If you, I had a cousin who switched her major like a million times and then she found her major and she has her dream job now. So follow your dreams. <laughs> If you want to check out the admissions table, their booklets have a list of all of our majors as well. So we'll move on to the next question. How do you find balance between your academics and your social slash personal life? So I will have to say as a freshman that at first it was really hard because especially as a commuter, like you have your classes and then you have spending time with your friends, but as well as you have other duties at home. Like maybe you have siblings, you have like chores and stuff. So it's really more about finding time or like planning out how your schedule is. Cause I would say as a freshman, your schedule, even though it's set in stone, it can always change last minute. Cause sometimes that does happen. But I will say that after like the first couple of weeks, it's kind of like you just have to learn to go with it and kind of plan out. I would say also um, from 
a kind of athletics standpoint of all this. Um, you also have like very specific like practice times and stuff like that. So you got to kind of figure out a way to balance it where like you can hang out with friends, but you also got to be at practice on time. You got to go to your classes and then you got to have time for like your family or familial responsibilities uh, once you get home. If you're a commuter like me, John and M. Um, and so it, it was tough to find a balance like the first uh, semester I was here. But as you get used to it, I think it's the same as when you get used to anything. Um, you kind of find a way to balance it, and over time, it'll get easier. So that's what I would say. Yeah, um, so kind of similar to what they say about balancing. It's, it's something you have to work on, and it's really being an advocate and designating time, and time mm. management is so crucial because, you know, you have your classes, and then you have your social life and your personal life. So... How I really balance it is I use a planner and I make sure I'm very strategic about how I spend my time. So, you know, like throughout the week, like Monday through Friday, I have classes and then my social life, I like to see my friends, be involved on campus and pretty much everywhere on school, like always here. So I just make sure I make time and then I have family responsibilities at home as well. Yes. See, I think actually you want to turn it off. It's okay. Here, use this one. Okay, and then I also have two jobs. So, but really, stick to a schedule is very important because you are very busy as a college student, and there's a lot of responsibilities being a college student with grades and everything. So, just make sure you stay on top of it, and then also cows. Like Julia and Laura are very beneficial to my success too. And they help me keep me accountable of being diligent in class of, you know, how to manage my time effectively. And we will have an opportunity for you guys to ask our panel questions as well at the end. I'm worried about starting school at a place where I don't know anyone. How can I make friends in college? Okay, so since I live on campus, um, it's actually not that hard to find friends. Even if you don't live on campus, it's not that hard either. Um, in the first week when we first got here, I already I had made a group of friends pretty easily. And one of my favorite memories was the first time I ever had like hung out with them. We walked to the Wissahick and Creek. It's not that far from here. It doesn't take that long to walk there. So we had taken a walk there, and then once we got back, we had watched Titanic, and that's one of my favorite memories that I've made so far because we got the chance to bond with each other through that, and then I've basically kept my entire group of friends this whole time, and when you make friends, they basically, when you're here, they basically become your family because you're here a lot of the time anyway. So it's really not that hard. Um, I'd say for advice, just go up to people and if you're looking for somewhere to sit in the cafeteria, for example, just go up to them and ask, can you sit with them and then spark up a conversation. I would just like to add on on that. We have like a lot of clubs as well. So like we have so many different clubs. We usually do a club fair every semester. So it gets people to, to interact with people and gets people to know each other as well as everyone on campus is really nice, like almost everyone is. So if you need help, you can always go up to someone and they can guide you to the right person. If you need, hey, do you know what this class is? Or do you know what a counselor is? If I need tutoring, who do I go to? Somebody 100% of the time will lead you to the right direction. Okay, so as I told you, I transferred from Montgomery County Community College. So going here, I didn't know anyone. So I, my story is a little different. So as I told you, I didn't know anyone. So I really pushed myself to get out there and meet people. And as like everyone in here on the panel has said, everybody is super nice here. You know, you walk and everybody's like, hi, how are you doing? And it's, I really like that small community feel, like we're very night tight, very close to each other, and like 
Chestnut Hill has become like a family to me. You know, like I look forward to seeing all my friends all the time and the faculty and staff truly care about you here. Um, so like making friends in school, you can join clubs like John said, that's a great way. Or if you're an athlete, join sports. Um, just really push yourself out there. I mean, I, I will be here next year and they will too. And we have like a lot of clubs. We have a nerve spicy network for our club that you should join if you're coming here. There's just so many opportunities and you never know where it may lead you. I also just wanted to state that we also with the club do like Friday events or very rarely, but we will also do weekday events. And going to those is definitely a good way to like make, uh, you know, kind of group um, and figure that way, figure it out that way. Thank you. Uh, some of our Friday events, we've done movie nights. We went to like Arnold's Fun Center laser tag. We've done um, a murder mystery game. We decorated the student activities office for Halloween and Valentine's Day. Um, and those are all student led Event. So our executive board helps plan those events and gets feedback from the current CHC students as to what they want out of those Friday events. It's very student-led. So do you have to know exactly what you want to do as a career when you start college? Um, no, you don't have to know what you want to do and actually um, the school has, if you're undecided, if your major is undecided, they give you basically a bunch of classes that you can take to figure out what you want to do. They're very good with helping you find something that you want to do. But, I, I mean, I've already picked my major, but still, even if you haven't, I'm a computer science major, but if even if you haven't, you still have ways of figuring out what you want to do. And it's pretty easy. I would also like to add on to that, that with majors, we have a lot of minors as well. So like, for example, I am a media and communication major, but I have three minors. I know that sounds like a lot, uh, but like the other two minors go with the media, but I picked up philosophy because I just started taking a philosophy class and I really like how to write and how to like critical think. So like, I just talked to the professors and they was like, well, I think this can benefit you in the long run. So it's not just yourself, but you can ask professors, hey, I'm kind of into this, like what kind of courses should I take or what route should I take? And the professors here are so amazing, they will guide you. Like you maybe want to take this class this semester and then next semester take that class so it can align. And we also have academic advisors to help you find your path too. They're very good at what they do as well. Yeah, you will not fall between the cracks here. We, if you're in the neurodiversity program, you have Laura and I. We have weekly check-ins with all of our students. Um, students have student success advisors. They have academic advisors. They have their professors. They have their RAs if they're living on campus. So there's truly a lot of ways to connect um, with. We have career development as well. All. Pretty much, I believe all CHC majors, when they graduate, are expected to have completed an internship. So career development can help place those internships, and that can kind of give you an idea career-wise. Like, do I? I think I want to be, you know, work in forensics, but then if I'm actually working in a lab, do I like it? That kind of thing. So, can you describe ways that you have built your professional network while since starting college? I would say since starting college, I has built my build my professor, professional network by talking to staff and talking to other people who used to go to Chestnut Hill. Because due to the careers office, they can actually help you connect with people who used to come to Chestnut Hill or because of Chestnut Hill career office in the program, they have a lot of people that they know. So that's how you can branch out and if you like a specific job or in your major, later on you find out they can help you look for internships and people to talk to. So I would say that's a great way to network. Not just that, also by professors, because like so many professors would be like, they would talk to you and be like, 
well, you know, this internship is open. If you wanted to take it, I can let you more know more about it. So it's also not just from the careers office, but the staff here and even students look out for each other as well when it comes to like networking. So for professional network, I'm gonna kind of tie on some of the things John said. Um, since I've been here, I've had two jobs. One of them I currently have. So last year I worked in the library. I was a library aide. And then this year I'm working in admissions. So I work as an area diversity assistant. So I give tours to students who want to join Chestnut Hill, but the Naira Diversity Program specifically. So if you want a tour and you want a tour guide, I'm your girl um, for that. Um, and I do a lot of behind the scenes work. So sometimes you might get a phone call from me and just like telling you about the things we have coming like open houses and minute school day. So you'll see a lot of like things from me. Um, I really built my resume here with all the opportunities ha I've had, like, as I told you, the two jobs I've had, and then being president of the Naira Spicy Network. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities, and then kind of like John said, like, professors will tell you about opportunities, too, that they know about, that they recommend that you get a job for. Like, a lot of my education professors are always telling me constantly about jobs that they know are hiring. And also, Laura and Julia have helped me have interviews. Like, I had an interview with someone from the federal work study, uh, more specifically, like, the U.S. government, kind of. And that was a really cool opportunity. And then we have a career and development center here. And Nancy and Andrea are really great. And they'll help you get connected, and you can do internships, I know. For me, for education, like you're required to have field experience. So I've had, I'm currently in my special ed practicum right now. And, you know, through every major, you'll have a bunch of opportunities. And, you know, we, we sign up for Handshake. So there's a lot of web um, job openings on there. So. I'd also like to state that pretty early on, they also have us uh, on like LinkedIn and places like that um, where you can build your network there too. I would say like look out for people you know or um, graduates of maybe school or other schools you might have known um, that are working in a field that you would like to work in. And if you connect with them and you let them know that they're working in like a field you want to work in, you want to learn more about it, I'm sure they'd be glad to help you out on that side. And they could definitely help you build their professional or your professional network because they're some of the people that um, would help build that professional network. And I will just state, uh, we don't have tours built into this event. I will say our students are very lovely and came to speak on this panel during their spring break. So we are going to respect their time, but if you want to sign up for a tour with them um, later in the school year, I will be more than happy to facilitate, but I will respect her time. She's too nice to offer tours today. <laughs> Plus, nobody wants to walk in the rain. All right, we'll do one more question up here, and then we're going to open it up to the audience for audience questions. So I'm worried that when I'm left to my own devices, I'll choose to sleep in and watch TikTok. Have on top of your schoolwork with this new independence. On that side of things, um, it is definitely something that I think many people have had to get used to, um, kind of being like independent for the first time in their life, or as independent as they might be. Um, but you just got to like, I'd say setting alarms is a big thing. I, I know some people who forget to set alarms and that does getting to class. Um, but yeah, you just gotta set alarms. Um, and you obviously want that, like watch TikTok or watch YouTube or do something because you don't want your whole life to be super stressful and um, always focused on work. But you just want to figure out that'll work for that while also getting your work done and doing whatever other things you might need to do, um, you know, continue on with college. I mean, I like to be organized, so I have, you know, planner, which has all the things I'm doing in the day, but then I also like having to-do lists, you know, before I leave the house, these are the things I must get done, 
before I leave the house. You know, sometimes I don't always follow that, but you know, um, and always making time for yourself too, because you know, a lot of us are social people and you need some me time. So that normally happens when I get home. Um, but I also have family responsibilities, but shout out to my parents over there. <laughs> um, but to stay on top of your stuff, you basically, like what I do is I pretty much just check my Canvas page every day, or at least try to. And basically that's how you can stay on top of your work if you don't set reminders or alarms to get your stuff done. I basically try to get my stuff, my work done by a certain time or at least start it by a certain time and to put like pressure on myself to get it done. And to add on with that, like for some assignments depends on the course. Uh, maybe like this is what I usually do. I kind of write like an outline. So I maybe be like, okay, so I maybe want to write the introduction for this assignment. Now take a break, go back to it and then do the rough draft, take like a five minute break or so, and then finish it up. So maybe I have someone check it out. We have a write-in center. They are great with like check-in work and all of that. I would say as well, like if you make a schedule, it's easier. So it's like, okay, I have class time at eight o'clock and then it's done around 9.45. And then I have like an hour breaks. So maybe I want to get a tutoring session in for that 30 minutes before I take my break before my next class. And you definitely aren't left to your own devices. Um, that's a lot of what we do in our weekly check-ins, especially for our first years is, you know, connecting what resources would you like to connect with? We have a writing center, math center, literacy specialist, uh, foreign language tutors. We have academic coaching. Um, so we ha definitely work with our first years as well as our upperclassmen with connecting them with those resources. But just know like when you're here as a first year, you're not just you know, thrown to doing this all on your own. We're definitely there to help you. So I am gonna open up. We only have about 10-ish, eight-ish minutes left. So I'm gonna open this up for questions in the crowd. Any questions for our students? If not, I have backup questions. <laughs> What was the thing you struggled with the most when you first came to campus? I would have to say the first thing is, I would say the best way to put it is this campus at first can seem like a labyrinth for like a maze. So many floors and like so many different ways, but due to staff and due to like usually the first week, they have people walk around and be like, oh, what floor are you looking for? But after like the first week or so, you kind of like start to rememberize. And still to this day, I will say, I find new ways to get to class. <laughs> um, so my, or the thing I struggled most with was keeping both my athletics going well while keeping my academics going well, just like the balance, just because like it was the first time in my life that you know you're, it wasn't classes for the full day and then you know you go to practice we had classes then i went to practice in the middle of the day then i went back to class and then i went to practice at the end of the day and it was hard like you know finding time to do work in between classes when practice was in between classes so yeah that was probably the toughest thing for me yeah i'd say for me probably was Oops, probably the social thing of it. Like, I had friends within the first week, but when we first got here, I was kind of trying to figure out, like, who could I socialize with or, like, how was I going to find friends? It, it ended up be going fine, but I was also worried about getting the classes and all that, too, because I wasn't sure, like, how I was go where classes were and all that. So I, we ended up finding our way pretty easily. <laughs> But yeah, that's one of the, two of the things I kind of struggled with at first. Okay, I'll speak on to you. So once again, not knowing anyone, um, I really didn't know anyone, but I pushed myself out there and then I got to meet people and get to know what all Chestnut Hill, Chestnut Hill has to offer. And then my second thing was getting back in the routine of going in-person school. 
because as I said, I transferred fall 2022. So things looked a lot different because of COVID and everything. And I, all my time at Montgomery County Community College, I was online. So getting back to the routine of waking up, you know, not five minutes before class logging on to Zoom or, you know, just getting back in the routine of, you know, having school all day week and working on top of that. So those were my two challenges. Thank you. Any other questions from the crowd? Anyone? So we have what is called our FIRE program. Um, a lot of our students here actually were participants in FIRE, um, so they can talk about their experiences, but I can just say what it is. Um, it's a four-week program. One week is in-person, so it's hybrid. The other three, it's an online class that students are taking. They are offered, I believe, two different classes. I think it was sociology and Spanish last year. Um, so yes, any student who has deposited and is like, has an intent to enroll at CHC um, in that upcoming year can be in the FIRE program. It's not currently open to like high school students who are in the middle of their high school year. It is for people who will be attending Chestnut Hill that fall. So if it's this summer, it would be you were attending this August. Um, so that's what our FIRE program is. And if you guys want to talk about your experiences from FIRE. I also wanted to state, though I think she partially said it, was that uh, this specifically is completely free. So you get three credits, um, no extra cost. Um, and it's a very good way to start, especially if, um, luckily for me, when I was in the FIRE program, one of them, one of the courses that was offered to me, actually both of the courses that were offered to me um, were requirements for my major. So I needed the language requirement, I needed the um, sociology requirement or like human social something. I forget what the technical term for it was, um, requirement. So that helped me get those three credits without me wasting extra money in order to get them. So it was very helpful. Also, I made a lot of friends in the FIRE program. That one week on campus, like as long as you do kind of like what I did, like go around, talk to people and figure everything out, it is a very before um, your college year actually starts. Um, and. I will also say as well, if you're thinking of moving into the dorms, it's a great way to just have that one week of experience. So that one week is free, no paying for the dorms, like meals are free. And you get to experience like college life for like a week. You still do the courses after and you still do the credits. But I would say the big takeaway is you get to experience like meeting new friends, meeting new people, as well as being independent for like your first time. Since Ryan is not gonna highlight this himself, did you check your email today, by the way? Oh, well, Ryan was hired as one of the FIRE program assistants for this summer, so I just wanted to <laughs> highlight that. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, so congratulations. <laughs> um, and check your email. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just, I wanted to say, like, the students who have been FIRE students and um, can apply to be the FIRE assistants, which is pretty awesome. And something else that I think, kind of there's a distinction between FIRE and the neurodiversity program. Like, FIRE is open to all students, but the neurodiversity program is like a critical element during the development of the FIRE program. So we work very much in conjunction and develop some of our own um, pieces alongside that. So um, one of the other cool things for the students here is since they are on spring break, they are getting reimbursed. So they're like being paid to do this. And then we also come up with clever ways for like the summer, we can't, hire so many fire assistants, but I can hire neurodiversity liaisons on the side for summer, you know? So there's like ways that um, we also work to employ our students and to make sure that everything is like student led. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to highlight that for you, Ryan, that congratulations, surprise. Uh <laughs>
And um, I think it's really awesome, you know, so he'll get as a sophomore, he's going to get, you know, the leadership experience and the um, in dorm experience of supporting that program. Um, so for the effort of time, I'm going to wrap up this panel, but thank you to all of our students again for working on their spring break. I cannot emphasize that enough. Thank you. Thank you.